you are watching the sea trial of a new ship. For the first time, she is being put to the test. In July 1959, a new kind of ship went to sea with Savannah's name emblazoned on its side. The nuclear ship Savannah was a $47 million experiment, an Eisenhower administration project demonstrating the peaceful uses of atomic energy. The ship's sleek white hull concealed a nuclear reactor that provided all of its power. Energy which can propel her 14 times around the world on a single fuel loading. Energy which is silently, safely, and instantly controlled through the flick of a switch, the turn of a knob. Yes, this ship is truly different. For this is the world's first atomic-powered merchantman. This is the nuclear ship Savannah. President Eisenhower envisioned a future ocean filled with ships propelled by the power of the atom. And the Savannah, named for the little steamship of the same name that proved the feasibility of steam power for ocean-going vessels, was meant to be the prototype. It uh, entered uh, any number of different ports around the world, uh, uh, was received everywhere with, uh, with, with awe. It, uh, it served with its contemporary ships uh, in the Merchant Marine. Uh, it, was, um, it was a great success uh, given its mission and given its design. Well, you know, this was the first job for many of us. It was my first job, and, it was, and like a lot of us say, it was our best job. We truly enjoyed it, but it was also a sense of a purpose of what we were doing, and we did accomplish that purpose, which was to show the peaceful uses of atomic power to the world, but also that uh, atomic power was feasible for merchant ships. I uh, spent several, uh, many years on this ship, absolutely loved this ship. Being on this ship, never considered it work. This was uh, a place that you wanted to be all the time. You didn't even want to take vacation. It was so much fun on this ship. I'll tell you, it was the most impressive job that I ever had. And the day I was appointed in 1967 was the happiest day of my life. She was probably the finest ship that we had in the American merchant fleet. And the crew on board from the lowest messman to the oilers down in the engine room, the deck crew, and especially the officers on board all took great pride in being on this vessel. You could count on each other, you worked together. It was the greatest assembled crew I think you could have ever imagined. And I, I can't imagine what my life would have been like had I not had these great experiences. To that end, the new Savannah, like its predecessor, boasted comfortable cabins and passenger common areas in addition to its cargo holds and cranes. It was evident that those who traveled on the first nuclear passenger ship would not only travel safely and swiftly, but in convenience and comfort. The cabins are bright, spacious, and well-equipped. A luxurious lounge features color television, a library, and unusual decor, such as tables cut from solid slabs of petrified wood. The lounge also offers a fine display of works by some contemporary American artists. A golden model of the original Savannah is displayed at the entrance to the dining room. Here, passengers are served fine food in an elegant setting. On one of the open decks, the fresh sea air and sun may be enjoyed, free from soot and exhaust. The enclosed veranda contains a variety of entertainment facilities and a full view of the outdoor swimming pool. At night it becomes a center of some of the ship's social life. Predictably, this bold maritime experiment, like the steam-powered one that preceded it in 1819, was doomed to eventual failure. The nuclear ship Savannah was never a commercial success, 
and eventually it became too expensive to operate. Attempts to make it a museum in its namesake city came to naught, and finally it spent years rusting away in a mothball fleet. Now the Maritime Administration has funded a refurbishment of the pioneering vessel and hosts regular reunions of former crew members aboard ship. Some of the nuclear sailors' fondest memories hearken to their maiden voyage to Savannah in 1962. Okay, I was standing on the, on the port side, just about here, on the port side. Well, this, that might have been me. Original Savannah crew member Dave Freeman shot this color film footage from atop the ship as the Savannah passed the crowded riverfront. Numbers of yachts coming beside us and people cheering. I've never seen such enthusiasm in my life. And it was almost, uh, what an enjoyable experience and uh, very heart rendering to see the appreciation that Savannah had given, bringing, a, bringing us in the fire boats and all of the boats that they could have, shooting hoses and the uh, buildings here that could blow off steam, blowing steam, and us saluting them back. It was uh, probably the most impressive day in my entire life. Arrangements had been made, the, the, the typical southern hospitality, they treated us just like sailors, and they, they took, gave us the top floor of the Hyatt Regency and yeah. filled it full of booze, and all the girls in town came over, and we spent all our time there. <laughs> right. They treated sailors like sailors. They knew how to treat us. Today, this nautical nuclear pioneer is being prepared for what its admirers hope will be a bright future as a museum ship at a willing public facility somewhere in the United States.